This is Wild Chronicles. The warm, shallow waters off Florida's south coast are home to a homebody, the nurse shark. These large fish are bottom feeders, foraging usually at night, and can appear rather sluggish during the day. Great white sharks migrate long distances. Blue sharks sometimes crisscross entire ocean basins. But most nurse sharks eat, sleep, and reproduce in one area their entire lives. And that consistency has brought two scientists back to the shallow cove for many years. Jeff Carrier and Wes Pratt. First time we ever saw any of this activity was uh, almost, almost 25 years ago. And I couldn't exactly tell what I was looking at until I discovered that I was looking at two sharks, not one, and that they were mating. Jeff and Wes are here, continuing the only long-term study of shark mating in the wild. These two shark warriors have been up close and very personal with their subjects. You get hit by one of these tails. We've been knocked senseless on more than one occasion. The team gets the close-ups here in the lagoon. But what about the bigger picture? How much mating occurs in the places they can't observe? in the vast area outside the study site. Well, that's a job for Critter Cam. This is an animal that lives in deeper water. It's long-lived. We can't follow it. We don't have the technology to do that. But Critter Cam does. So just how do you attach a Critter Cam to a shark? A fin clamp, made from your everyday ordinary barbecue tongs. The clamp is lined with soft sandpaper, so it can grip the slippery fin without causing any damage. The unit fastens here behind the dorsal fin and is connected to the computer with this wire. That way the clamp will release when the computer tells it to. But the dorsal fin of a nurse shark is less rigid than other sharks and it tapers off. So the crew tests a modification at a marine education center before deploying the critter cam in open water. Nurse sharks may be homebodies, but so far they're not cooperating. It's been a week, and the crew has yet to see a mating event. But finally, they see the signs they've been looking for and deploy critter cam on a nurse shark female. Tails up, tails up right out there. He is 210. He is 210. I'm going to have a hand. I'm going to have a face. These female sharks are choosy. They're picky about which males mate with them. And when the wrong guy shows up, she shoals into water as deep as we're in now so that he can't get a hold of her fins, which is a vital first step. But when the right male shows up, she allows him to push her to slightly deeper water to mate. The male can get a hold of that valuable pectoral fin because they don't have hands. He can then curve his body around the female and mate with her. The first critter cam falls off and ends up on the sea bottom. So the crew tries again on a male nurse shark. I want to see mating events. I want to see, and I want to see, I'd love to see him travel around in here and continue on his way, and if and when he goes outside, to prove that hypothesis of deep water mating. Minutes later, the male shark has found a female and begins the pursuit. 
She moves quickly out of the area that Wes and Jeff can study. Then she stops and waits. So does the male. I, I enjoy the, uh, the encounters with the females. Uh, it was a treat to see it from the shark's point of view. Then he makes his move, biting her fin. The female arches her back, and a wrestling match begins. The male makes a total of three attempts to mate with her, but he's unsuccessful. Now what? The male moves into deeper water, alone. He stops and seems to be resting. To see sharks resting, almost sleeping in deeper water, suggests that the mating may, may, uh, may take place in the shallower waters. And the males may be heading out to deeper waters to rest and recharge. Critter Cam has shown us that for the males, maybe the deep water is the refuge. And it's turning our thinking around and maybe even upside down. Wes and Jeff will be back to these waters again next year to discover more secrets about this regal shark.